to order. Are there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Um, I could give a brief update on some clerk information. Who's talking? Uh, Jeremy Matt. Uh, uh, update on? Uh, some clerk stuff that I've done. Oh, okay, good. We'll, and, uh, and Phil, I, I wanted to, to let you and others know that John Russell and I have switched positions. I'm back to being the delegate and he's going to be the alternate for the next year. Okay, so noted. Uh, wait, who is the alternate again? I'm sorry, Alan. The alternate will be John Russell. John who has okay. been the del Yeah, we're, we're just switching. We kind of agreed to do that when he agreed to come on as a delegate for a year. And that's been approved by our uh, local select board. We, 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 had a, we met with them uh, last week and they approved it. Okay. Is there any public comment? Is there any public? Hmm. Okay. Hearing none. Bills to pay, treasurer update. Jeremy, I think you had sent something out this afternoon. Yes. So I'd like to give you an update on finances and such, um, and also at some point get a uh, get an approval to um, to pay our bills. So um, if you refer back to the email that I sent, we've got uh, Fred's. Uh, deliverable the final um final feasibility study we got, had we got a bill for that uh quite some time ago and the, the remainder of the payment for that is twenty one thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars and thirty three cents um we've got our esteemed clerk jeremy matt um who we are paying him his uh monthly stipend plus the cost of doing some of the stuff he's going to uh, maybe update us on in the next like clerk update uh, agenda item um, and I sent you the invoice for that uh, Becca Schrader um, we ha I had her go to the Secretary of State and change the registration for CV fiber etc cetera, etc cetera. and part of the process cost her $20 and I thought that was reasonable to uh, reimburse her for that and then w one thing that I don't have a concrete cost for yet is the cost for a box of checks for a checking account um, I think they're going to be $12.99, but I didn't want to include a concrete number in this yet. Um, so all told, minus the checks, we're looking at paying bills in the amount of $21,506.33. And I move that we, we pay those bills um, when we can. Seconded. Move and second. Any discussion? I thought Becca already huh? got checks. Yes, there was, th th there, yeah, there was like two rounds of when this was supposed to happen and the checks never ever actually appeared. And I actually okay. even went back into the BSCCU history and tried to see where did they charge us for the checks. And then I called to order checks and they never appeared. And I talked them to them today and I said, okay, can we actually get checks now? And they said, yes. And then she actually gave me, gave me her name and her contact information. She said, if you don't see them, you can come yell at me. So I'm feeling... Okay. Feeling co confident that we'll get them this time. All right. Okay. Chuck, question. Yep. Um, I'm wondering if we could amend the motion in some way to uh, just take care of our clerk payments going forward, uh, so we don't have to revisit this all the time. Um, we, we certainly could. Um, the the prac. I mean, and so my my practice when I was on the select board was that whenever any of the bills came, we would usually just have, you know, here are the bills and we usually just moved at the aggregate amount, um, understanding that, you know, these things are gonna get paid, but I'm, you know, obviously completely willing to uh, roll with whatever the governing board would prefer to do. My, my take on it is as long as someone is staying on top of cash flow and we get updated, uh, you know, every once in a while on that perspective and, and we're meeting our obligations that something like that, that's going to be a recurring uh, cost that we we just maybe move, move it once a year or something like that. 
Okay. So assuming that we have this going on a regular basis, we get pretty used to it. Uh, it seems like it takes like maybe 15 extra seconds, maybe like 30 seconds. There's okay, here's the number. We approve. Yes, let's go forward. It just kind of keeps everybody kind of keep a base of where we're spending and where we're going without really a huge waste of time. And obviously, if we go into a long discussion on every single one of these, then that's something else. But I just like to stay updated. So uh, so something else that, that we might do that some municipalities do is something called a consent agenda, mm -hmm. where there's a whole bunch of items that are kind of non-controversial and somebody moves the consent agenda and it's a whole package of like, hey, we're paying our bills. Here's the list. You know, we're um, approving this petition. You know, here's the list that is not really going to generate any discussion, but that um, we need to, as a board, you know, give the formal approval to. So that, that doesn't exactly solve what you're talking about, Chuck, but it would essentially not, it, this would, wouldn't be a discussion item. So I like the sound of that. Yeah, so basically, Jeremy, it's that hearing no objection, we approve the orders for paying checks uh, that have been presented before us. Correct. Yep. And, then if some, and then if somebody has a question or wants to speak up about something or wants more detail, they will do that. They have the responsibility to say, hey, I have a question, and then they'll ask that, and, and then, then we'll go back to the original assumption that hearing no objection, it's, it's approved. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so I mean, I, I think that seems reasonable going forward and then just only have discussion items for things that would be like, hey, we need to spend $5,000 for this um, and have that stuff approved ahead of time. Don't, I thought we had something somewhere in the, the bylaws about approval that was needed for a certain expenditures above a certain amount am i am i wrong about that or no we did that the the uh, finance committee did come up with a set of guidelines that right. are like really old and back when we had no money and <clears throat> so it's, you know it's there but you know it certainly might be revisited or amended given how we're doing business these days it, right it makes sense to revisit that so we should dig up that old language and figure out exactly what it says so we can make sure what we do now meshes with that. Yeah, I can try to find when it was. I can't remember the exact wording that was finally approved. I think I've like got a, a copy. I, I think I have a copy of it because I, I think I might have written it, frankly. But um, I, I'll see if I can find it, Jabon. And then if I can, I'll, I'll give you, I'll send you an email and let you know I need some help. Okie dokie. Yeah, I, I think it was a purchasing policy. And if you can't find it, Alan, I'm quite sure that I have it somewhere. So are okay. policies the same thing as a bylaw? Are they binding or are they guidelines? Um, yep. Well, if they're a policy, we should be abiding by them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's okay. So there's, I, there's, boy, I, I, I've, I've had to go so deep into the answer to the very question you, you've asked serving on a school board and also having a board of directors at the ACLU, the, 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 the basic way to think of it is a bylaw is more or less uh, like a statute or law. And then the guidelines or policies are the things that you come up with to say how you're going to follow the laws that have been approved by everybody in implementing certain actions. Okay. So they they do carry the force of not a statute, but certainly they're binding yeah. on us. Um, so do we want to update our policy to be a, for a higher amount, or are we going to just? Well, we have to out? first figure out what exactly we wrote yeah. because I yeah I think, okay. yeah, I think Jeremy's right. We wrote it when we had no money, and right. so probably a hundred dollars seemed like a lot of money to us at that time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm really that's true. <laughs> So to keep this moving along, we do have a motion, we have a second, we've had a lot of discussion um, more so about uh, purchasing policy or paying in other ways. Do we, do we want to have an amendment to the original motion and second, or do we want to dispense with the motion and do some research on uh, whatever we may have for policy and come back to that? at the next meeting. 
I, it's you know, as the person who brought this up, um, I am comfortable with what Jeremy proposed. I think it's a it's a great compromise that still keeps the board on the loop of things, but also pro speeds up some of the 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 blocking and tackling, if you will. Um, and uh, you know, I would be comfortable with just approving the motion as it stands on 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 the table now. Uh, and then uh, in the future, just ask that these be brought in the manner Jeremy described. Okay. okay. I can, so you're I can, utilizing I can the just consent agenda, that. essentially. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Uh, could somebody repeat the motion since I joined the call of, about a minute ago? Sure. Uh, My, oh, oh, no, sorry, go, go, go for it. No, you're, you're, you're the clerk. You should be able to do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> you would think. Uh, so, Jeremy uh, Hansen listed off uh, some uh, some bills that need to be paid. Uh, the remaining the remaining amount for the feasibility study, uh, an invoice from the clerk for uh, services and for uh, registration of uh, some stuff with the Secretary of State. Um, a twenty dollar charge from Becca Schrader for. Um, also some stuff with the Secretary of State. And uh, then lastly was ordering a box of checks. The total amount, I think Jeremy was $21,506.33. And the motion was that you moved to pay those bills. Thank you very much. Okay. And who had the second on that, Chuck? Uh, Siobhan. Siobhan, okay. So hearing no more discussion, Unless there is a no vote, I'm going to consider this as having passed unanimously. Is there anyone voting no? Okay, then we'll take that as a unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, maybe this is a good time, uh, Jeremy, for you to jump in with uh, any updates that you have, Jeremy, Matt? Okay, <laughs> I was going to ask that. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on one, one second. Hold on one second. I have a couple more items. Oh, really sorry. Okay. Oh, su super fast. So I just want to get the bills paid. Um, I have, and I, like I mentioned in the email, I have the check for the broadband innovation grant, the part one, uh, in the amount of twenty-eight thousand six hundred fifty-six dollars and thirty-three cents. I also have a check from the town of Cabot, or uh, not the town of Cabot, but a uh, a grant that we got from, and Andy, if you're on this call, refresh my memory, what development organization or whatever that was from. That was- It's uh, a C CCIF, <laughs> Cabot Community Investment Fund. Okay, and that was in the amount of $421.20. So those will be deposited <clears throat> by the end of the week. Um, still outstanding, and I have an email out um, with uh, with them, USD or rural development, there should be a check coming from them in the amount of $7,736.47. So those are, those are still, um, that check is still outstanding and the remaining uh, 29,000-ish will be in the bank account by the end of the week. Okay. That's all I got. Any other questions on those items? Okay, hearing none. Jeremy, Matt. Okay, so um, it took a little bit of wrangling, but we do have uh, two trade names registered with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, those trade names are CV Fiber and Central Vermont Internet CUD. Um, and those are owned by CV or by Central Vermont Internet, which is our official name for tax filing purposes. Um, and uh, those registrations cost uh, $50, which is part of the amount that I'm asking to be reimbursed. So brief update, but that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Jeremy? Moving along, uh, next item is, um, oh, yeah, the V, is it V CUDA? Is that how we're saying this? Agreement yep. and delegate selection? V CUDA. That's so I was right. a time that was, you know, uh, popular when I was a kid, but 
I was a, a V8 CUDA, I think it was probably more like more like that, right? The CUDA. <laughs> there you go. CUDA. All right. So I sent along the uh, interlocal agreement to establish V CUDA. This was something that's been uh, there's been a certain amount of agonizing over with the uh, attorneys and this and the other CUDs. And this is the state that we've gotten to. Um, so. I guess um, I, I'll make the motion that we um, authorize me, the governing board chair, to sign this agreement to establish VCUDA with the other communications union districts. Is there a second? Second. John seconds. Discussion. John always seconds. Comments. Siobhan's quick. <laughs> No questions, comments, criticisms. This doesn't Ooh. commit us to any money or anything, right? Like, no. This is this is just creating the group. Just least, creating the group. I think it's a great uh, thing to do. Uh, the the CUDs need to work together. Having some sort of formal, you know, organization, I think it's good. Has Same. it been decided um, just, just if it's just CUDs or other entities? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, John um, Morris. Has it been decided if it's uh, just the CUDs or other entities as well? Um, I think I think the consensus was that it was just going to be CUDs. I mean, th this could be edited in the future if we were going to incorporate uh, other organizations, but right now it is really just about communications union districts. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, so just, just to clarify, uh, Siobhan, actually on your question around financial obligation, uh, while the agreement does not constitute any present financial obligation, there is actually a, uh, a line in the document uh, that, reserves the right for VCUDA uh, to require a membership fee to cover nom nominal expenses incurred by VCUDA on behalf of the parties, such as postage, filing fees, and other incidental expenses. So it is possible that some amount of financial responsibility might arise in the future, just based on the current writing of the agreement. Okay. So I have a comment. Um, in, in the discussion the other day, with the people putting together the agreement or finalizing it, there was the question of whether VCUDA could be a vehicle to pass money to CUDs from the state or other entities. And at least for the time being, the consensus was that it would not be that. So it might lobby for things, it might lobby for money for us, it might advocate for things, but it wasn't. It, it isn't conceived at the moment as a vehicle to pass money to or from CUDs. Right, right. And, and that was the conclusion of the person who drafted this. So Paul Giuliani wrote this, and it's it, he wrote it with that and with that exact um, objective in mind that it wouldn't be the place where it would get <clears throat> it would get a bunch of funding that would then pass down to the members. Tom, you had a, your hand up. No, no, that was my question exactly. Alan? I'm looking at uh, section number four, which says by majority vote of the Vicuda Governing Board, additional municipal corporations may become parties to this agreement upon application and upon such terms and conditions as the Vicuda Governing Board shall deem reasonable and appropriate. Did the attorney who reviewed this have any questions whether the statutes, the, the state statutes that created CUDs give us the power working together to allow municipal corporations to become parties to an agreement that we make? I mean, municipal so, corporations include everything from towns to school districts to uh, a number of other entities, I think. So this is pretty broad and it seems like it seems like a power that maybe the legislature did not envision we might we might want to exercise. 
So I can actually answer that directly. Uh, the CUD statute does indeed explicitly offer or uh, provide that power to CUDs to enter into. Um, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to misquote the statute, but if if you could if you dig it up, you'll see it uh, to enter into cooperative agreements to to work together to to achieve the goals of of the district. So yes, that is explicitly in statute. I guess I wondered why it said additional municipal corporations as opposed to additional CUDs. Yeah. Because, I'm, I, oh, go ahead. No, I'll go for it, Michael. Um, there, there are um, ready districts in Vermont. Or there's one at least. There are town um, municipalities that have um, their own broadband systems, and it, potentially they could become members in the future. So municipalities that are involved in broadband, like Burlington Telecom was one, now it's private. Uh, okay. So even though the title of the organization is a communications union district association, entities other than a communications union district could become members. Is that, is that if, if yes, but I, I think that, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that would be be rare, and I, and I think in the case of something like Newbury, I think Newbury is going to end up joining a CUD anyways. Um, but the yeah the individual municipal. Um, groups, the, you know, the individual towns that are doing efforts like this, they, they may decide to join this, you know, as a, you know, like with the uh, the league, you know, we might have them on as an associate member because they're not really a CUD. Okay, got it. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? Okay, hearing none. I'm going to do this the same way we did before. Is there anyone who is going to dissent? No. So, hearing no no votes, no no votes. So that means they're all affirmative, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll consider the unanimous vote to enter into the agreement for the CUDA, and I believe we need to pick a delegate. Is that true, Jeremy? Yes, we need a delegate and an alternate to the VCUDA board, just like a town needs a delegate and an alternate to our board. Okay. Does anyone have interest in stepping up to be the delegate? I, I, think, I would like to. I, I was just going to say, I think the delegate should be the chairman of our board, whoever he or she may be. So as the chair changes, that delegate position would change by name, but still be the same position. And then the alternate, I, I have no suggestion at this point. So, so like, so, so then the chair is the ex officio delegate. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that exactly means. It's by, by virtue of the office. Yes, yes, sir. That's yep. what I mean. Yeah. Jeremy, how do you feel about that? That's, that seems fine by me. I mean, if eventually somebody else is going to have to have all the all the glamour of, you know, putting the agenda <laughs> together and running the meetings. So why not? Okay. Does anyone want to make that motion? Sure. You want me to restate it? Sure. Um, I move that um, the primary delegate from CV Fiber to V Cuda be the um, chair of the board. Second. Who second it? Alan? I'll second it. Chuck. Chuck? Okay, good. Any further discussion, questions, comments? Hearing none, is anyone opposed to the motion? Hearing no opposition, we'll consider that a unanimous to have the chair be the delegate to the CUDA. Alternates. Uh, moving along, RDOP. We have two things. RDOP. Alternate. Alternates. Oh, we still need an alternate, Phil. Oh. We need an alternate for. It, it could be you. We could make you know the vice chair. Are you volunteering? Or someone? I nominate or David Keeley. I volunteered to. So. 
So David Healy's been nominated. You need a second for a nomination? Yeah, second. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and any other nominations? Hearing none, David, are you okay with that nomination? I'm great, it sounds great. Okay, is there anyone opposed? Hearing none, we'll consider that unanimous. So we will be represented by Jeremy as chair in the position as delegate and David will be the alternate. Uh, what's next, Ardoff? David, is that you? Ardoff, that's me. So I sent out a, 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 a couple of emails on this subject and a spreadsheet on this subject. And um, the summation that I have is that we had interest from a number of people that were interested in teaming with us to do RDOF with, C with having CV5 or participate with them since we can't bid on it directly. And Washington Electric sort of came in and said they were gonna do it and please would you join us? And so we met with Washington Electric Co-op and had a, a good round table with them. And those are summarized, I think in my some meeting notes that everybody got. Um, but the basic, I think Jeremy uh, Matt asked me some pretty, pretty decent questions about what did it mean? And so that's how that table that got generated that I sent everybody that summarized the various alternatives in terms of what the, the financial benefit was. And it really became clear that WEC is the probably the best partner for us to work on this. Um, part of the deal though, is that we have to um, team partner with their bidding entity, which is Art, RDT, I don't know, I forgot RDT. the name of the company, RD, NRTC, which is going to bid for WEC and also Vermont Electric Co-op. And to do that, we need to, um, come up with $5,000 to have them do all the paperwork to include us in the bid. The uh, business development committee met last week and voted to recommend to the board that we, we do the join with the partnership and, and um, come up with the $5,000 to be a full member in the partnership. Um, this allows us to participate with them. If there's questions about census blocks we want to bid on, we, we can work with an RTC and WEC on that. Um, if we weren't part of it, we probably couldn't. So we felt that we, in a lot of ways, I think the development committee felt this is sort of earnest money to show a little bit of commitment to WEC um, so that we can keep moving forward with them. Because in the end, it looks like, I think we came to the conclusion, having them take on this, uh, the, the build out of their network with us or for us, and then we'd be a VC, is a pretty decent financial deal because they can borrow money pretty much at no interest. And um, we think they'd be great partners to work with. So I, and one of the tables I sent out was showed you on the part of the phase one routes, summarized the, um, the amount of mileage that was in WEC land and what was in Green Mountain Power. And the majority is in WEC, even in that phase one development. So for that reason, I'd entertain a motion to, um, or I'll propose a motion that we join WEC in the RDOF um, bidding process as a team um, under the auspices of NRTC and to come um, to join them with a $5,000 uh, contribution or a fee. Actually, it's a fee, not a contribution. So. Okay, so second. Second. Sure. Okay. I'll also Come kick on. off uh, a comment on this. Um, so back in March, uh, we actually uh, earmarked some money, uh, $1,500 toward advertising a potential private loan program. Now, Phil and I attended a great session uh, with uh, a number of the people who helped run EC Fibers private party loan program. And it turns out that advertising your loan program is in fact illegal. Uh, so 
uh, that money that we earmarked for that purpose, combined with the fact that we are tabling that avenue for now and, and really pursuing grants rather than a private party loan program, um, I means you know that money can go back in uh, for that, and we're not gonna, we haven't spent any of it, and we're not going to spend any of it in the near term. Um, so I just wanted to to point that out. Or ever, because it's a well, there, there there are <laughs> there are other ways you can spend some money to help it work. There's a workaround, uh, but because we're not pursuing a private loan program, it, it it's rather irrelevant. We'll have other advertising needs in the future, but the loan program is not going to be one in the near term. Right. Other questions, comments about? So I have, I have a couple oh. uh, a couple of comments. And unfortunately, I, I missed the end of the discussion of the Business Development Committee meeting. Another <clears throat> farm-related thing pulled me away. But um, I, I, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't disagree with the, um, with the motion. Um, and I see Ray actually wrote something in chat, somewhat to the uh, to what I'm going to talk about. Um, if we agree to work with WEC and their consortium, it will prevent us from having conversations about our deployment and our bidding strategy with any other parties that are participating in the auction. So um, our good friend Michael up in Plainfield and if Cloud Alliance is bidding on any of those, then he can probably not come to our board meetings anymore or as a, as a participant. Um, so uh, if- uh, Let me comment on that. Or do you want to finish? Oh, I'd like to finish. I'm just saying that, and then if ValleyNet, for whatever reason, if ValleyNet participates in this as well and they go and bid, we can't share the, the bidding strategies. We can't say, okay, you, you work over That's here, we'll right. work over here. So we can't collaborate in, in that way. And we could we would not be able to disclose anything about you know what we're planning on building um, once once our name gets put on that in that short form. So the the advice that Carol Monroe from ValleyNet suggested, and this is something that I, I did present or I did mention to folks on the business development committee, is that we may be better off. And again, I'm not sure how I feel about this. We may be better off kind of sitting sitting it out and waiting and seeing as the dust settles who won the, you know, who won the bid, uh, who won the auction, and then wait until um, and just make sure that they know that we're a willing partner and we will help them build out in those areas that are in uh, that are in our member communities. I'll shut up now. Michael, so, are you going to comment? Uh, yes, yeah. please. Um, so I agree with everything Jeremy said, except at the very beginning. Um, as long as, if, if, if CV Fiber joins the consortium with NRTC, VEC, WEC, and 55 other cooperatives across the country, electric cooperatives, um, only those members of the consortium are able to discuss any bidding strategy whatsoever. Um, that doesn't mean that they can't discuss other other parties can't discuss other issues with any of the members, but nothing related to RDOF and RDOF bidding can be discussed. So, if we think RDOF bidding and strategy would be would take place in meetings. Then yes, then I would, and and I am participating in the auction separately. Then yes, I would not be allowed in the meeting because that would be potential collusion. Um, but if 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 we're careful not to discuss RDOF and RDOF bidding, then then CV Fiber could join a consortium. Cloud Alliance could be in another one or a sold bitter we just wouldn't be able to discuss those issues at all we wouldn't say where we're going and what we're bidding and what our strategy is so that's that's a fine point but it's an important point um i the idea of sitting it out is what at the moment uh the nek cud is also considering um sitting it out as jeremy described and and it's an interesting strategy it it 
leaves a lot of freedom in the hands of the CUD, but it takes some of the control away in terms of what gets bid upon, what prices get set, what we're, how low we're willing to go. What if, what if here's, here's, a, here's an example. What if WEC um, is unwilling to bid any lower than a certain amount because they feel they can't afford to build below a certain amount? But CV Fiber's interest is that we would bid very low because we're intending to go there anyway, and it's going to help us fulfill our mission. So we have different um, possible business objectives. If we're in a consortium, we can talk about that. If we're not in a consortium, we're barred from talking about that. So that's just an example of many, I imagine, would take place. So there's some real advantages to being in a consortium. And there's some real disadvantages, yes. as Jer Jeremy pointed out. And the this last comment David. I want to make. To... Go ahead. Go for it. Sorry. I have one more comment, but I'll wait. No, Go no. ahead. No, finish. So, first, I, had, I had a conversation with. Oh, I can't see anybody anymore. So I had yeah, a I'm conversation. I'm on the phone. <laughs> and she. Had oh, the opposite, so my last. I, I, oh, I couldn't. Can't tell who's talking. Should I finish, or you want to go? Okay. That was David Healy that Michael was talking. Finney, David. Go ahead, David. Sure. Uh, I want to. I mean, I talked to um, Carol Monroe that day that we met, and she was of the opinion to join WEC was a good idea. So, Jeremy and I had different conversations with Carol. So I don't know. Um, Shabon. I just. What's the? What would be the benefit? of not joining, being able to talk to a bunch of people about something we have no say in versus yeah, I don't have one. Javon, this is David. I don't have access to the minutes from the meeting, but we, we summarize bullet by bullet those kinds of concerns you just raised. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, I was at the meeting. And so, I don't have any. Yeah. But for what it's worth, I did send but, around the minutes to that meeting uh, right at the start of this meeting, so everyone has them. And I think they were part of Jeremy's materials a few days ago as well. Uh, so if you want to review the more in-depth discussion from the meeting, uh, that that is available. And this is Ken. If I can summarize my position on this, Washington uh, Electric is a is a unique partner to CV Fiber in that there is at least the possibility that they can construct and it maybe even own fiber that will be used by CV fiber. It's, this is related to the business model work that Fred Goldstein is pursuing. And so working closely with them as they think about RDA so that they can understand more closely what exactly the financial repercussions are of their participation in the auction and therefore their, their role in moving forward. I don't think there is another partner that plays that role, that, that we would have that role with. Um, certainly we wanna be partners, potential partners with ValleyNet and EC Fiber, but they don't have that same um, geographic um, um, parameter that we need to talk to them about. But we, WEC needs us, needs the work that we've done to better understand what a construction looks like in a way that no other potential partner does. So that, that's the reason why I, I'm a pretty strong supporter of us partnering with them. And yeah, this is a discussion of the RDOF bidding. They need our help. They need to understand the financials that we can provide them. Um, and I have no qualms about not being able to partner with someone else. If, if WEC loses, then we're open to partner with those, whoever does win in those areas, but we won't have helped those folks um, construct their bids. Um, so, I want to come back uh, around to Michael. I think you had a little bit more to add. And I've yeah, got was, something when you get a chance. Yeah, to it, it, was, it, it was on a slightly different topic, but it, it goes to Siobhan's question of what are the disadvantages of joining this. Um, and I'm not advocating for this, I just want it to be clear. So there's a $5,000 fee to join the consortium to, to, be, to take part 
to have NRTC prepare what paperwork they need to prepare. I mean, it's, it's sort of a profit thing for them, but that's okay. Um, but if we in any way participate in the bidding strategy and want anything assigned to us at the end, in any way, I believe there's a second $5,000 fee. Um, we need to get a little clarification from NRTC and or WEC about that part, um, because we may be voting on a $10,000 thing instead of a $5,000 thing, or maybe just the $5,000 joining the consortium is sufficient. But I'm not, it, it's, I am still confused as to what exactly the second $5,000 entails, but it sure sounded like in the meeting that most people pay both 5,000 fees. And so that's my, I'm not saying we shouldn't, but I do think we need a little clarification of that. Um, and um, in regards to, ch I, I agree with what Ken said. Um, WEC is, is a very fine partner for CV Fiber, even though I was competing for that. I, I support WEC as, a, as um, the selection. And um, WEC's territory extends into both EC Fiber and the NEK Community Broadband Territory, as well as ours. And they probably will end up partnering with all three CUDs. Um, and I don't know, Valleynet might even end up joining the consortium. It's hard, hard to know what they're gonna do because they're looking at a number of different <laughs> strategies for different purposes. So it's, it's a nuanced question whether we should sit it out or join the consortium. There, there's advantages to both. So this is David again. And Michael, I, I, I respect your opinion, but we, we the Business Development Committee did go through this, voted to do it. I'm not sure about the second $5,000. But the five thousand dollars is actually has to be committed to them this week, so I need we either take action positively or negatively. But I I think you've muddied the water a teeny bit. Um, I, without, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Knowing. This is Jerry. I'd like to add to the conversation, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. We're gonna we're gonna hang stuff on WEC poles no matter what someday, and we we have a. A, a lot of overlap territorially with WEC. We have a lot of overlap in our in our mindset, our reason for being. The WEC came into being because the the uh, electric companies at the time weren't stringing wires out here, and we're doing the same thing 50, 70 years later. And I, I think there's there's a lot of overlap in the cooperative concept of both WEC and CV Fiber, we are going to have to work with them at some point. This art off has kind of made us, you know, pushed everybody's hand because here's an opportunity to get grant money to hit these underserved areas, which both WEC and CV Fiber are very interested in doing. So they forced our hand a little earlier maybe than we would have liked to, but we're going to need to partner with WEC at some point, and they need to partner with us. And I, I, I fully endorse working with WEC. We should take that step. All said. Jeremy, Matt. Um, so the thing that kind of clinched it for me that WEC is the best way to go is that it we kind of decided that going with WEC doesn't lock us into any ISP. Any of the other partners, they're going to want to be our ISP. Um, the other thing that David mentioned is that WEC is able to borrow money at very low rates. And from what he was saying, not only are they willing to do that for RDOF areas, but they're willing to do that for non RDOF areas that overlap our territory. So I think from the table that David sent out, it was something like 70% of our mileage is WEC. The other thing is that we're not really leaving any money on the table by partnering with anyone else. Because I think from what David found looking at his maps, something like 98% of our RDOF eligible uh, census blocks are in WEC territory. So that's all that I had to say. Anyone else? Yeah, this is Greg Kelly. And I, I believe that the second, if I remember correctly from the presentation that was made to our meeting, that 
the second five thousand dollars would be only required if we actually were bidding. So the first five thousand is sort of the entry fee to get in to the consortium. If that's if I'm remembering correctly. Um, also, the non-discussion period only lasts up until the bidding is done, and after that, there's no restriction on uh, communicating with any parties. Okay. Other comments, questions? Okay. So we're voting on, I've lost track, uh, I've lost track of the, the motion. Um, so, uh, do you want me to repeat that? Yeah, please. So it is a motion to join WEC in RDOC bidding uh, under NRTC and to pay the $5,000 fee. Although we may want to consider if there is that second $5,000 fee authorizing that now, uh, just a suggestion. Okay. Um, who, got, who had the second on this? Uh, Chuck, I believe, yeah. Okay, okay. And it was motion um, by David. It sounds from what Greg was saying that the second 5,000 may not come into play. And I guess if it does come up, we may have to vote on that um separately so we have a motion and a second um i think let's proceed okay. the way we are right now if, if there are no objections are uh, again the way we've been doing this is are there any no votes on this motion hearing none we'll consider that it has passed unanimously job so david that was both um items the art off and the wet piece i'm assuming um what about the update from business development um committee is that your item too consult to me jeremy uh, I, 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 I okay. Oh, okay. Um, I was just going to say, uh, um, I don't know if anybody else has anything about uh, what Fred presented to us, but uh, Fred <clears throat> provided us an initial, um, very, uh, still very early draft of the uh, the spreadsheet for the business plan, and which allows for and so. There's there's still some things that are missing, and there was some stuff he was in the process of adding when he um, provided the snapshot. But it's there, and uh, I have not had a chance to play around with it. But you can change things like uh, take rates, like when we're starting different uh, different parts of the projects, um, you know, um, interest rates, um, how soon you know um, people <clears throat> people take you know, take up service. So if we have a take rate of, let's say, take rate of 40%, how many of those come within the first two months? And so there's a way to sort of stretch that out and so, rather than expecting like, yeah, we have 40% take rate, we're gonna assume that we have them all on day one. Um, and then we can change things like how much churn, um, what's the cost of this individual component? What's the cost of labor? What's the cost of insurance? Um, that's all in there and all um, tweakable and very, very, um, um, like I think, like I've said before, very, very exciting to a kind of a, a data nerd like me, um, just being able to to play with it and sort of run different um, kind of run run different scenarios through there and see like, well, when is it that we get to be uh, EBITDA positive, or when is it we get to be cash flow positive, and so on. So that's um, and he's continuing to work on that. We should have. Uh, I honestly don't remember when he said he was going to be done. Like done, done with the, the whole uh, business plan, which I think <clears throat> will include a, a report, like an actual write-up and that spreadsheet. Uh, David, do you recall that? Well, he said he was about two weeks behind. So I think we were the, turning to the milestones. He was supposed to finish by the first mm -hmm. week in July. So do you have it, Jerry? 
early July was the date that they were yeah. supposed to uh, have a document for us. Yep. And now he's sending us about two weeks behind. Okay, so m mid July, I guess, then is when, when we should see our final, final, final um, business plan. Uh, I've also asked him to essentially put a couple items in there that, that will directly and easily translate into um, the um, Vita loan, which I actually have as a, as a, a later agenda item that, that we can talk about in a bit. Okay, are there any um, other comments, questions on this agenda item? Didn't sound like there's anything here that requires um, a motion. Nope. Uh, state recovery fund request is the next item. Jeremy, is that yours? Yeah, that's mine too. So uh, this is very, very fluid. I've sent you some links over the last week or so. Um, right now, the um, the magic is in. I don't think I even sent you. Hold on one second. I have a message from Rob Fish. I'm going to forward to all of you that I got at it's like 4:25. Um, let me send this, and then I'm going to um, refer back to it. So right now, there's a bill. It is um, H. H966, that's an act relating to COVID-19 funding and assistance for broadband connectivity, housing and economic relief. There is a part of that that contains um, an $800,000 carve out specifically for funding CUDs through the end of the year. Um, each grant to CUDs or each grant can be no more than $100,000. So if we were writing this, you know, if we were writing this agenda item, you know, as a, a reality show, it would be how to spend $100,000 in six months. Um, and so I've already asked, you know, uh, looking at our timeline going ahead, I asked Chuck uh, and kind of the communications committee to, to think about, you know, how much how much does the communications committee need, you know, could they spend by the end of the year to essentially get us rolling with some of the things that we were kind of planning on doing anyways, or things that we could accelerate so that we can, you know, increase the speed of our of our deployment. And uh, and Chuck, correct me if I'm wrong, but you came up with about uh, $30,000 of things that we could go and just do. Um, so- That is correct. <laughs> Cool. I'm I'm glad I'm remembering that right. Um, there there was a little bit of variability there in terms of assumptions around whether we decided to actually pursue a private party loan program or if we wanted to do a little bit of advertising around trying to uh, garner gifting. Um, and the biggest variable was when we would actually try to start selling pre-subscriptions. So, you know, that's obviously entirely dependent on a lot of other dominoes falling into place. But uh, if, if the dominoes fall in the way we would like them to fall, then we will probably start spending to that tune, that order of magnitude at least, by uh, around the end of this year. So, um, I, I, and I did put out a, a call, uh, must have been last week, and I said the legislature was looking for, you know, what does our next year of budget look like? And then David, on very short notice, put out some amazing, uh, put together an amazing spreadsheet that looked at, you know, well, what if we hired an executive director? Well, that would be an exciting, you know, turn of events that somebody that could manage kind of the day-to-day -day things and really get things rolling much more quickly than all of us volunteers could do. Um, so that was included in there, a consultant to look at more wireless, uh, these sorts of things are in there. And so this whole question, this whole exercise may become moot if Senate Finance says, nope, 800K, snip, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So they're literally, you know, literally deciding this in the next 48 hours. So if you look at the email that I sent you from uh, Rob Fish, uh, he does a pretty good job of, uh, you know, putting up the lay of the land. Um, that said, we need to still be ready. You know, should they fund some or all of this, we need to be ready on the order of, you know, two weeks, be ready to pull out a 
a budget and apply for a grant and say, these are the things that we want to do and we can do by the end of the year to check these particular checkboxes. Um, and as a quick quick reminder, the, the bill as it's written right now would allow for costs of CUDs that are under these three umbrellas to be covered. One would be consultant fees, two would be administrative expenses, and three would be, this is sort of the uh, potpourri you know, question section, uh, other, recovering, other recovery planning costs deemed appropriate by the commissioner. So essentially handing the the decision-making power of everything else over to June Tierney. Um, you know, again, still supposedly, apparently trying to abide by the the federal rules that were there, and that's still some. Not, I would say not 100% lack of clarity. And I feel I can't see Ken right now, but I know Ken's going to have something to say about the federal rules. Um, but the, the reason I wanted to put this out in front of everybody is that. Should we get that funding that kind of earmarked for us, we need to be rolling on uh, applying for it soon. And not that we have to have this this in front of us right now, but I just, I guess I want everybody to be thinking about it. And if you have things that definitely need to go and can go and fit within those buckets, um, if you have those, yeah, put them together, send me a message and we'll, you know, we'll make sure that when that request goes out that we, that we include them. And I. If this goes forward, I will, I'll have this on the next agenda too, and we'll have something a bit more concrete then. So that's my, that's my report back about how to spend $100,000 in six months. Sounds good. And as Jeremy said, I, I will weigh in here. One, one of the factors that needs to be considered not by us, but by the legislature is the extent to which this is actually uh, eligible under the federal program. And to the certainty is that if we take work that leads to connectivity before December 30th, um, then that I, we're we're rather certain that those that that expenditure will be covered by the federal program. So whether the legislature puts in the language that kind of restriction, um, we'll find out in the next 48 hours because they don't. You know, it's only on, it's for it's a hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars for everybody out of 1.25 billion. The Fed's probably aren't going to be looking with that with that sharp a magnifying glass but but if the if the legislature is concerned about about eligibility then they will put some language in there that the steps that we take as a CUD should lead to some increased connectivity by December 30th um, and that could be a challenge but it, it's a possibility so this is Greg Kelly and we could do something uh, that we have a plan to have fiber. We could put wireless up in order to meet that time deadline, and then it's replaced by fiber in the future. So that's an option. And that's and that's certainly been something that um, has been noted and pitched. And actually, I think you you may even see Rob Fish mention that explicitly in the. Um, in that email that I forwarded. Sean? So could the buy-in that we have to do for the art off thing, that $5,000 come out of this? No. Because, Potentially. Because no. the art off bid gets us a foot in the thing and then we can put up the towers and get people connected by the 31st. Well, that, that, again, that would be a that would be something that uh, DPS would would have to decide. I mean, is it a consultant fee? Uh, yeah, kind of is. Is it an administrative expense? Yeah, kind of is. Um, it, you know, I don't think it would hurt applying for it if if that window, you know, if that door is open for us, then. But I don't totally know. Any other comments? questions again I, I don't think this is an item that we need to take any action on um, at least yet uh, can, I make, can I make a comment sure um, so in regards to fixed wireless um, there is a provision in the bill as it stands now to fund 
Um, Vibrant is a home and underground conduit to low-income individuals, and I think it's intended to fund um, AC fiber deployments to trailer parks primarily. And in that same provision, fixed wireless to um, to anybody, um, but emphasizing students and staff of, of K through 12 schools and um, and um, facilitating telehealth. And that's an $11 million item in, in the proposal. And then this 800,000 that, that would go to up to eight CUDs eventually, um, the 100,000 for us, that part of that could be, part of it or all of it could be used for fixed wireless um, um, extending the aims of the CUD um, separate from that other provision or in, in concert with it. I just wanted to bring your attention to that. And it's possible that either or both of those will not emerge from the cutting room floor tomorrow. So it's really important for those who think they can influence any of the senators to um, listen in and, and find ways to communicate with them. So, and, yeah, so, add so one more one more piece that we need to be ready for, and that's the cable line extension. There's a couple million dollars, which has gone through many iterations, but seems to be pretty much a constant, that there'll be cable line extension dollars. Um, and the language, I believe it's the current language, allows the communications union districts to essentially veto any of those cable line extensions. And if my memory serves, we have 30 days from the date that a cable provider um, proposes the use of cable line extension um, additional funds for us to definitively act and say no. So that's something we're going to need to be ready on um, to, to be aware of when those proposals come about and look to see how they might intersect and undermine some of our proposed build outs. And if so, then we would have to step up and, and say no. And we actually included the same provision in the uh, section five, which includes the fixed wireless. So um, the CUD could say, no, that fixed wireless deployment is not in our interest. We veto it or not. So that that veto provision is in both of those. David, did you have something? I had something. Go ahead. Mine, was, mine was just covered. So I just want to make sure that CUDs had the, uh, some authority over some of those extensions. Okay, good. Jeremy? Yeah, so um, I want to point out that the bill right now is in Senate Finance. Senate Finance is chaired by Washington County Senator Ann Cummings. So um, she is, I think most, well, most of the folks on this call, she is one of your senators. Um, might not hurt to say, hey, this is something that's really gonna help. Reach out to her, and I mean like reach out to her in the next four hours. Um, because she will have, you know, she will have some some sway in this. And if you if you if she's hearing from a lot of different people, especially, you know, those of us sort of in the, the grassroots organizing to get connectivity here in Washington County, I think it will carry some weight. So what do we want to say to her? I've been kind of wanting to contact her, but not sure what to say. Well, so I've so, got a letter that I put together. I can send that out. I haven't sent it to her yet, but I've been meaning to. So if that would be helpful. You send it to me now, right now, Mr. Sure. <laughs> so, so Siobhan, so your Senator, uh, Mark McDonald, uh, he is also, um, he is the vice chair of that committee. So you should reach out to him instead. Okay. I mean, although obviously you could still reach out to her as the chair. She's, yeah, she's I just, from I've just communicated. I used to live in Washington, and so I've communicated with her in the past, and so she knows okay. who I am. So okay. yeah, but yeah, he, yeah, I've communicated with him as well. I'll, I'll shut up now. Alan, <laughs> if we could all be emailed two sentences that we could not necessarily use uh, word by word for word, but use to build a very short email to the senators, that would be really helpful. They don't want to see anything big and long at this point, I'm sure. They probably want to see two sentences from constituents that will give them support, that will give them cover to show support for the appropriation of the money. So if if either Jeremy or David or somebody could just 
you know, li literally get us two or three sentences out on email. I I'd certainly be happy to email Ann and, and also Mark, because I know him. So, you know, that would help me. I, I have a minority opinion here. Um, this bill in some form will pass. The issue is there are several sections to it, and there's a lot of, of back and forth as to whether that $11 million should be available for specific projects, the 800,000 for the CUDs. I think that's one thing that letter from us to say section whatever it is, I don't know what section it is, please support that because the communication union districts are largely volunteer bodies. This will really help professionalize us. That I could see a message from us, get the head nod, but in sort of support the bill, I honestly, I don't think that helps to be quite honest. I mean, they, they need to go through each of the sections and determine which ones they keep, which ones they grow and which ones they cut. And so it's the CUD piece for sure. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we have time tonight to go through and determine if we have a common sentiment on each of those. Um, but anyway. I, I think we have a common uh, path with Section 5 as well. That's, that's the Valley Net and um, Fixed Wireless one. I think that we can all support that one. So fun, funny you, you mentioned this about a common, um, a common thread or whatever i actually sent out um i sent out some commentary to uh senate finance and senate appropriations appropriations will also be looking at this tomorrow they don't have the bill currently but they will they will have some um opinion about it obviously um i just posted a link in chat um that is that commentary that i sent to senate finance and i break it down section by section so i say you know, um, here's what it is. If it passed as is, it would be great. In particular, we hope that sections four, five, and six remained unchanged. And I say, section four, here's why we like it. Section five, here's why we like it. Section six. Um, so take, modify, use whatever you like in there. And then there's a, a bit of a suggestion at the end that was a response to some testimony from uh, Lauren Glenn Davidian about um, kind of a complaint that, you know, why isn't broadband deployment being managed at a statewide level? And I said, well, there's two two things that we can do there, you know, or two things I think would be good there is, you know, put it in the hands of DPS. It's, you know, very clearly within their, um, their bailiwick and they're in, you know, they're in the executive branch, they're in state government. Alternatively, I said, assign this responsibility to VCUDA and let the communications union districts sort it out from there. Um, so whether or not you want to add any of that sort of stuff in there, that's uh, uh, may or may not be helpful, but there is at least language in there for sections four, five, and six. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Any more discussion on this item? Okay. Moving on, I think the next item is what veto loan prerequisites. Yes, so um, I actually started filling out the 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 veto loan documents just to get a sense of what we what we need, what we uh, what we have, um, and just getting a sense of the uh, the timing of what we need to get. So there's some there's some stuff that was a surprise that. Um, so we need to list the, the ownership and principles of our organization. So no no ownership, so that was easy. Principles, I don't think would be a stretch to say the executive committee. So chair, chair, vice chair, treasurer, clerk, if that, I don't think that's too complicated. Um, and then they're looking for all of our socials. Okay, again, kind of makes sense. And they want resumes for all of us so that's that's fun so just want to let you know that we'll be putting those into our application um the other thing the actually two things that we need to make sure that we have lined up um, one is a cpa prepared business financial statements or tax returns for the last three years so because we have been in existence since 2018 we are going to have to budget and budget for and pay someone to do that work, who is a CPA, so that we can apply for the VITA money when we're ready to do that. I don't have, I, I don't have a, a budget. I don't know how much that's going to cost. I don't know what's what's involved. Um, is there anybody that wants to take on the kind of 
process of sussing out the cost and the process for that? No, <laughs> it's very expensive. It's 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 equivalent to an audit. Yeah, get one but of those if, letters. But it, so it's it's going to be two thousand dollars. I don't think it's going to be more than that. There's we no, don't have that. It, it'll be more than two thousand dollars. No, I mean so with with the fire department, the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department, we they have an audit every year, every other year, and it's not it's not that much. It's not two thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and they have a lot more money moving around than we do, so it should yeah. be a pretty simple thing. And and, and, okay. and correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry. Do you remember how much that how much we pay there for the audit? I don't remember off the top of my head. No, I don't. But it wasn't two thousand dollars. That that sounds more than than we were looking at. And do you know the name of the firm that does the audit? I can. Yeah, we could dig that up. I I don't remember it off, off the top of my head. So I'd be willing to approach them. I mean, there's already a track record here of doing it for municipal organizations. So, and, and you said, and so, so if I give you their name, and you would be willing to reach out to them? Yes. Okay. I I will find that out. Used at the fire department. Okay. Cool. And then, does it does it make sense? I mean. In the interest of time, does it make sense just to say, hey, you're hired, or do we put it out to bid? Uh, that sounds very reasonable. I think we should just hire them if they're willing. And what is our deadline for having this done? Whenever we want to apply for the for the Vita loan. So when we're done with the business plan, um, when well, I mean, so we, we may not apply for it until we know about the uh, Northern Borders money. So Northern Borders money is end of August, right, David? Yes. So so we have time to get a quote and then bring that to the board for uh, approval. Yeah. Yes. Um, just uh, recalling my memory that we had made some comments or some policies rather uh, a ways back about doing RFPs over certain amounts of money and, and that sort of thing. I just wanted to make sure we're going right by that. Right, and and that's that's actually a good point. We we may need to explicitly. I I don't have that policy in front of me. We may need to explicitly um, vote to bypass that policy to do this. So I suggest that I'll, I'll get a quotation from them and we can have it for the next month's meeting. Perfect. Perfect. So next agenda and we'll, we'll, we'll get that, uh, we'll get that policy. Uh, let's see, uh, bidding policy. Okay. That's, that sounds good. Okay. So that was one of the things we need. The other thing that we need and maybe, um, David, this is a question that maybe you can answer. There is a provision under business plan that there is an independent feasibility study by an engineer acceptable and approved by VITA detailing blah, blah, blah. Is that, is, do we have to have a, set, a second, like a second look at this by another engineer that VITA is going to approve? Or is this, is this just what, we are, what we're getting from Fred and it's been previously approved by DPS? Do you know? I read that as being Fred, but um, it's probably worth something checking. I don't. I can't okay. imagine you a second engineer. I can see a second fiscal financial review, but engineering, no. Okay. Huh. All right. So I will. I will follow up with uh, with Yoon Young at uh, at Vida and see what uh, see what she says. All right. See Yoon Young. Okay, um, and that was, yeah, aside from a bunch of other like paperwork, um, there's nothing, nothing so surprising in here. So if all goes well, you know, we'll be looking at uh, applying for the Vita loan if, if everything moves quickly, September, October, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, that's all I have with that. Okay. 
Any questions for Jeremy? Other comments? Good, we're moving right along. Um, I think we're up to approval of minutes from June 9th. Yeah, so I had one thing on that real quick. Um, in uh, the report on uh, reports back about uh, recent meetings, uh, Jeremy Hansen reported on the following meetings based on testimony from someone, um, possibly last name Mansfield, uh, the Vita turnaround to approve CV fiber for a loan could be on the order of weeks. I didn't catch that name. Could someone remind me of who that was? Tim Nolte, Mount Mansfield. Yeah, no, it was, it was L L Leslie, Nol N Leslie Nolte, N-U-L-T-Y, from Mansfield Fiber. Thank, thank you for that, yeah. Okay, thanks, sorry I missed that. Some of these conversations go a little quick and it's hard to keep up. <laughs> so moved. There's a second. Jeremy seconded. Who seconded? Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Wait, so who, who moved and who seconded? I, I missed that. I um, thought it was Jeremy moved, but. Jeremy moved. Who seconded? David seconded it. David? Okay. No further discussion. Let's just do this the easy way. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions? You guys have it? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find the unmute fast enough. <laughs> okay, we are ahead of schedule, uh, which is great. And uh, time for roundtable. I'm going to go first um, this time, uh, just to say thank you all for behaving and um, making my job easy this time around. It's a great meeting. And uh, once again, it seems like every time we meet, um, you know, we're just making more and more progress and uh, that feels good. I guess I'll just wander around here on the screen. So Jeremy, Hanson, you're next. Uh, I'm good, thanks everybody. Good. Alan? Yeah, I gotta tell you, if you've been living with a slow internet connection, you ought to get yourself to a fast one the next time we have a meeting. The difference is like being inside the room where things happen, as opposed to standing at the door and hearing maybe some of it, but not being able to, to participate at all. It truly is amazing. It's, it really makes a huge difference. So we're doing good work and it's really important. Can we use that as an advertising as we start to roll out our service? You got <laughs> it. You got it. I mean, this is gonna be recorded. Uh, yeah, sure, we should. But it, it really is true. I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying this to, to to valid to to explain why I'm sitting in a really nice place in the middle of nowhere by Lake Champlain, it, it's it it makes an incredible difference when you have a higher speed internet. You feel like you actually can participate, and that your participation is equal to everybody else's. And when you don't have that sense because things are jumpy, because uh, you don't have up to date images of the people who are talking or you yourself the audio is not good it, it's it's a totally different experience i'm 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 amazed I, i'm really glad i had this opportunity to experience it so we don't have to pay that was, split, right <laughs> right that was hard to hear by the way you must have a slow internet connection i do i have a, <laughs> I have a shitty internet connection. Andy, yeah. alan can you tell us whether what your connection is at home and what you have there Okay, so my home connection is uh, about seven, supposed to be seven down and 0.7 up. And here in Burlington, I was told, and I did a speed test, the connection seems to be about 70, so 10 times faster uh, download and 50 on the upload. Big difference. <laughs> great lead in, yeah, yeah. I'm jealous and great advertisement. That's it. <laughs> John Morris. 
Uh, thank you for inviting me y'all to uh, in welcoming to me to this board meeting. Uh, I still feel like I'm getting my feet on the ground. So I'm having trouble understanding some things that we're discussing, but I'm sure I'll catch up someday. Um, I'm specifically curious about uh, the information that was provided by um, cvfiber.talus, uh, the, the red and the green and, and the phase one build up. Where do I read more about that? Uh, that means you haven't gotten a copy of the feasibility study. So, so J John, I'll send you a copy of that r right now. And that, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, okay. that's a, a board only document at this point. And um, okay. that's, uh, yeah, that's the feasibility study that we paid, uh, paid some pretty good state money for. But that uh, go, goes into a uh, uh, excruciating amount of detail um, about where, where we might build. So let me send I that I promise right not now. to read it all. <laughs> OK. Hey. Michael. No, I'm good tonight. Thanks. Is that Ken? Is that me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. And uh, But uh, really, I, I do appreciate what Alan said. And, and listening to him and watching him, it is so clear that he has good signal. And I, I really would like to see a sort of marketing example we could put up on YouTube or something to show this is what you're like when you're at 3-1, and this is what you're like when you're at, at 70-50. John Russell. John has a slow connection in Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you're like with a slow connection. There, there there's yeah. your sound bite, Phil. <laughs> or Ken, I'm sorry. Threw it back to mute. He's gonna mail that in. Uh Josh. Uh no, just thanks to everyone for all the hard work that everyone's put in. And uh I don't have anything else to add. Thank you. Tom? Oh, ditto on that. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Right. Chuck? Two things. Um, first of all, just as a continuation of the uh, loan pri private party loan program topic, um, I just wanted to call out that, you know, based on the session that Phil and I attended, uh, we received a great deal of information on how to structure the program, including template legal documents we can use. Uh, I feel quite confident that if the board were to decide to move in that direction, we could do so very rapidly. Um, I also I, I want to uh, reiterate that I think the decision we've made to hold off on that program was a good one uh, because you know money is really starting to be available out there for our purposes, and, and let's try to go get the free money first. Um, and then uh, my, my other point is, uh, I would just like to echo uh, Phil's sentiment and go uh, one step further and say, this is one of the most productive and uh, sane boards I've ever uh, had the pleasure to work with. Um, you know, we, we clearly have a, a very uniform vision of what we all want to see happen and, and uh, uh, we all uh, seem to be willing to work together to do so. Um, and so I want to thank you all for, you know, making this uh, a pleasurable experience on an ongoing basis. So thank you. Thank you. Ray. Yeah, uh, pleased with the progress and that's due to the hard work of many people for the last couple of years. So thank you for that. Keep moving. Thank you. I jumped over Ray. Uh, pass, I'm good. Trev? Yeah, hey, I don't have too, too much. Um, I'd be uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, note that everybody should take a couple of minutes if you haven't and check out the whole Starlink project. Um, I know they're going beta, public beta has signups and uh, gigabit per second download, 20 millisecond latency, interesting stuff that should be going live for public beta in the next four or five months might be interesting competition. Thanks. Did uh, you Jeff? guys skip me? What's that? Did you skip me? No, I haven't gotten to you yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that, you can go last. Um, Jerry? 
Nothing to add. Thank you all. <laughs> Jeremy, Matt. Uh, nothing to add, but Siobhan can have my turn. Oh, okay. David? I um, I think I don't have much to offer tonight, so thank you. Okay. And the final word goes to Siobhan. Oh, Chuck, you sweet summer child. If you had been at the first meetings. <laughs> just, the first yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> six to eight months were were awesome. They were they were I mean you should, you should go back and look at the at the video. It, it's all out there. Well, I just want to say I'm really glad at how much work we're doing. And I sent my email to Cummings and McDonald and I put the text in the chat if you want to see it. Um, but yeah, great work, everybody. You're just awesome. And what Chuck said. <laughs> Anything else for the good of the agenda here before we close up? I guess that's it. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks, everybody. That was good. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Take care. Thank you.